Here we are, Sub Lieutenant Jones. Space. The final frontier. I am Captain Frank Lee English, and these are the voyages of the starship HMSS Imperialize. Our mission? To explore strange new worlds. To seek out new civilizations. To boldly go where no man has gone before. Rousing stuff, Captain English, sir. <laughs> you really think so? I was afraid it would sound a little bit cliched. Uh, the last thing I'd want would be for anyone listening to think that was going to be representative of the quality of all our dialogue throughout this entire voyage. Perhaps it's best not to heighten expectations too early on, Boyo. Yes, Jones. A healthy dose of self-deprecation should neutralise the mildly xenophobic nature of the mission we've been tasked with by Her Majesty, Queen of Great Britain and of the Commonwealth Realms. Yeah, so long as we can avoid resorting to trite nationalistic jokes, we should be fine. Yes, I absolutely agree, Sub Lieutenant Jones. Well, I'm past. Who's for tea? You stay here at the controls, Jones, while I navigate to the ship's kitchen facilities to acquire a refreshing beverage. The walk will give me the chance to familiarize myself with the intuitive navigation system. Can you grab us a cup too? I feel compelled to say an authoritative yet non-committal perhaps in this circumstance, Jones. It would be an appropriate reason to practice using the inventory system, yet I fear that such a magnanimous gesture may erode the command hierarchy aboard this vessel. I'll be on my way now, just as soon as I choose to exit this chair. I appear to have activated some sort of context-sensitive menu. I should select the appropriate option illustrated by these exquisite icons. Now, to find the kitchen. If memory serves me correct, it's just down this corridor, beyond the fourth wall. That's the gravity simulation switch. just yet. <clears throat> this computer is full of secret data. We keep the intel inside. It's for my Rosy Lee. Sorry, Cockney Crockery. It's our autonomous beverage dispensing robot, Gertie. It's a fridge. Wow, 
Why? It's packed to the rafters with mild English cheddar. Plenty dish, yeah? Mild green washing up liquid. It's a popular household brand of washing up liquid. It's an inconspicuous economy toaster. Cup of char. It's Alad's mug, isn't it? One day it became self-aware. The next it was writing the script for an adventure game. It really takes the misery out of making tea. It really takes the misery out of making tea. The humble tray table. Best stow this for now. I would do well to study these closely in case of an emergency, like we're stranded immobile in space. I'll have to take a closer look at these safety instructions for peace of puzzle. I mean mind. Peace of mind. Why, the humble paperclip, a staple of any adventure gamer's inventory. Any danger of making that tea, boyo? It's Wales' own son, Sub Lieutenant Jones. It's Allard, the Lewis to my Morse. It's Allard, the Gromit to my Wallace. 
It's Allard, the Andrew Ridgely to my George Michael. It's Wales' own son, Sub-Lieutenant Jones. Awfully sorry for the delay. Never mind, Boyo. How did you manage to carry it in there without spilling any? Well, I've just been very careful. Ever since that whole Deepwater Horizon incident. I don't really have anywhere to set this. You won't take over the controls from it until I finish. I wouldn't want to spill anything over these expensive electronics. Ha! Huh, but of course! Why, if such a thing were to happen, we'd have a real puzzle on our hands. Just go easy. Keep it steady. Mm, yes. Flight safe mode. Mm. Commencing cabin oh, depressurization. Uh, oh. oh. Life support uh, systems um. offline. Okay, right. Primary starboard fuel yeah, cell. Oh, no. Careful, for you. Mm. Keep it steady. Mm. Oh, okay. Mm. Opening rear cargo doors. Ooh. Easy, boyo. <laughs> uh. Fainting reserve oxygen oh, supply. Oh, so we should have done that. Oh, <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, oh, um, um, yes? uh, no, uh, hmm. Daisy, Daisy, give me your answer. Holy cow! <laughs> ah, look what you've done. I told you to keep it steady. Good heavens! What a waste of perfectly good tea. I think we should be more concerned about the irreparable damage done to the ship's steering system. Both problems, by the way, are your fault. Look, obviously, the controls weren't calibrated to account for my superior strength. They were more sensitive than a pubescent poet. Regardless, we'll have plenty of time to argue about this now that we're stranded. Unless, of course, we can replace the controls with something else. When you say we... I mean the royal we. I'll sort this out. Don't move. I don't want you dribbling on anything else. Honestly, you're worse than the elderly. That's the gravity simulation switch. The animators rather we leave it on. Less things to move. Now, let's see. This computer is full of secret data. We keep the intel inside. Hmm. There appears to be something stuck in the drive. Cutting edge 20th century tech. Gosh. No matter how many times I keep clicking on things, this drive won't become unblocked. I'll have to think of something else.
Cutting edge 20th century tech. Let's see if prodding this around fixes anything. Aha! One point four four megabytes of virgin digital space. Three and a half inches. It's compact, but still large enough to grip. One point four four megabytes of virgin digital space. This computer is full of secret data. We keep the intel inside. Of course, it lacks the precision of a mouse and keyboard. I can't use these two together. Your prime directives. I don't suppose you've kept in touch with Matilda or any of the other house robots. Ha! Remember that time you fell foul to a case of mistaken identity at Moss Eisley. <laughs> Was Vista as bad for you as it was for the rest of us? You know, we have a lot in common. In the movies, the evil villain always ends up being the supercomputer or Alan Rickman.
The upholstery is made from genuine organic polyester. to be stuck. With great power comes great responsibility. No flagship worth its salt would be without a draconian list of rules to adhere to. The Porcelain Throne. Mercifully, the ultra-absorbent litter goes somewhere to mask the odour. Somewhere. Uh, not all the way. Gosh, really helps you to see things in perspective. Have you found something to replace the controls you broke yet? Here, plug this in. See if it works. No joy, Boyo. What? Is it supposed to be plug and play? No, Boyo. You'll have to install the drivers first. Well, can't you just download them in here? The Wi-Fi can't reach this part of the ship. Try getting online in one of the other rooms. See if you can download the drivers onto something and bring it here. I suppose you will just be sitting here in the meantime. That's how the genre works, but if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And if it is broke, well, it's probably a tedious puzzle to fix it. Now, to download this driver. I just need to connect to the internet first. Bingo! Found it! Hmm, very odd. It won't let me save onto the disk. I can't seem to save onto it for some reason. I can't seem to save onto it for some reason.
Fantastic. Now to quickly copy this driver. Whoa, whoa! Oh, oh, sorry. Oh, gosh, is that the time? It'll be starting to get darker outside. Best check up on Alec and see if he's dried off. It's remarkable how much information can be stored on something so compact. It might fit Allard's dainty hand. I have a bit more girth. Three and a half inches. It's compact, but still large enough to grip. Sub-Lieutenant Jones! Sub-Lieutenant Jones! Allard! Wake up! Wake up, Allard! Oh, this is useless. He'll be out for hours unless I can think of another way to wake him up. Playing up, boy. I'm sorry. I don't know what came over me. It felt like someone else was in control of my inhibitions. Just give me the driver so we can GTFO. GTFO? Get things functioning and online. You need to swat up in your acronyms, FFS. For future scenarios. Here, install this, and we should be underway again. Uh, you could have used my USB pen, you know. What? Is that another one of your acronyms I'm supposed to know? What? Universal Serial Bus? Ha! <laughs> serial Bus. I know you're just making that one up. Um, well, Boyo, I've got some good news and some bad news. Which one do you want first? I'll take the opportunity to indulge in a fleeting moment of comfort and reassurance prior to being crippled with anxiety and fear. All right, Boyo. Well, the good news is the drivers are installed. 
The bad news is that one of us is going to have to descend into the dark depths of the ship to perform the emergency systems reset procedure. You mean turn everything off and on again? Exactly, Boyo. Yeah, presumably I'll be the one doing the legwork, as usual. Well, if you want, we could make it seem like you had a choice in the matter. Here, we'll flip for it. Heads or tails? Tails never fails. It's heads. Blast! I can't help but feel that somehow that was always going to happen. What fates impose that men must needs abide, it boots not to resist both wind and tide. Gosh! The writing on this voyage just stepped up a level. That was borderline Shakespeare. Aye, borderline. Right, I'm off. been up here long and already I think I've started to lose muscle density. In a bygone era, we could have just stuffed a child down there to sort this out. That's why we voted out of the EU. To get back to the good old days. On a more positive note, it would appear my bone density has remained unaffected. It's just like exercising at the gym, albeit without the judgment of others. If you want a job done around here, you've got to do it yourself. That leads into the airlock. Genuine British compressed air. I'm sure this will come in, wait for it, handy, eh? <laughs> yes. I've always thought it was a big risk having an airlock. I'm not sure the insurance would cover us if we were burgled.
That leads into the laboratory. How very retro. It isn't great for the environment. Replacement ribbons are a real biohazard. Hmm. Property of Irvin Schrödinger. The box is sealed shut. Why, it would be impossible to determine the fate of any biological life form inside. No matter how bad things are going, I find it helps to put a positive spin on things. This setup looks like it'll cause some sort of chain reaction. Gosh! It's full of the blighters! which activates the self-destruct sequence. It's a box used to store tools, commonly referred to as a tool box, I believe. It's a precision-engineered German motorized screwdriver. The other toys left aren't nearly as exciting. I'm fairly certain this is in breach of a myriad of health and safety regulations. should significantly reduce the risk of death by electrocution. Always a comforting reassurance. That looks like the emergency stop switch. This should do the trick. So clumsy. Ah oh, well, no harm done. <clears throat> Let's check back with Alan and see if that's sorted everything. Oh, yeah, it's starting to get a bit of problems.
Sub-Lieutenant Jones! Aye, Poyo? What is it you're tinkering with there, Jones? That isn't... that isn't our reconnaissance rover you're disassembling, is it? Well, but, funny story. While you were downstairs attending to that very complicated, laborious task, flicking that switch on and off, I've been running a variety of pre-mission calibration tests on the Beagle 2 too. I presume that's why the floor's covered with bits of toy Hot Wheels track. Firstly, the fact that this modular vehicular pathway simulation system happens to be mass-produced and branded as a children's toy is irrelevant. And secondly, yes. That's all well and good, Sub-Lieutenant Jones. However, if I recall correctly, we were specifically advised that the Beagle 2-2 tended to function significantly better when its complicated array of electronics and mechanical components were positioned inside its aluminium housing. Look, I just have to make a few minor repairs. During a centrifugal force resistance simulation, the rover proved exceedingly resistant. So it uh, flew off the loop the loop bit. That would be a valid interpretation of events, yes. Sounds like I'm going to be required to go on some kind of scavenger hunt. What do you need? To get the rover going again? For the time being, that's all I feel I'm obligated to offer, yes. I think the rigorous nature of the, uh, test may have burned out the main motor. I see. So... I'll have to find something to create some sort of electromagnet that'll revolve when a current is passed through it. I'll have to fashion a pulley system of sorts to drive power to the wheels. Something with a taut elastic band should do the trick, like an alluring undergarment. Now, if I was to remove the elastic... Alternatively, Bert, you could just always grab me a spare. We've got a cupboard full of them. Who's driving the boat? Nobody. We're tied. I turned the autopilot on. Hmm. She was only installed a week ago and already her standards are slipping. I don't suppose you noticed anything out of the ordinary earlier when I was performing that emergency systems reset procedure? Specifically immediately once the power came back on. No. Why, should I have? Well, well I don't know. Probably not. Forget I mentioned it. Be sure to put your toys away when you're done. I don't suppose you'd have any use for this premium German motorized screwdriver? Ah, cheers, Bert. Stop, Lieutenant Jones! What are you doing? Relax, Bert. Relax? Do you have any idea how expensive parts and servicing are for that thing? Look, I have an idea. I'm sorry, I presumed that was the motor I could smell burning. Look, we can replace the motor in the Beagle with the motor in this screwdriver. It's probably more reliable than our own spares anyway. Great thinking, Sub Lieutenant Jones. Why? It's intuitive thinking like that that won us the war. Of independence? Uh, no, no, the other ones. For the last time, the left stick moves it forward and back. The right stick turns it left and right. Do I have to repeat myself? By Jove, it works! In 600,000 yards, your destination will be on the right. You've reached your destination. Sub-Lieutenant Jones, we've arrived! The new, new world! Quickly, break open a container of property of ER2 flags and prepare a landing party! As much as I'd love to jump onto the surface and soak up the radioactive atmosphere of this uncharted, most likely fatally hazardous planet, I think it may be an idea to send the Beagle 2-2 down first, just to get a feel for the place. I've considered your suggestion, Sub-Lieutenant Jones, and have made the executive decision to send the Beagle 2-2 down for a quick recce, prior to making our own triumphant descent. The extra time will allow us to properly consider which 19th century member of the aristocracy to name this place after. Launching probe.
What the devil? Sub-Lieutenant Jones, quickly! We've been outmaneuvered! Someone's got here before us! We need to find out who that jolly well is and inject them from Her Majesty's new New World Post Haste. Set us down! rock structure, somewhere outside the range of what was previously understood to be the limit of human interstellar travel. I see. So, Sub-Lieutenant Jones, what exactly do we know about this place? Well, it's an uncharted rock structure, somewhere outside the range of what was previously understood to be the limit of human interstellar travel. I see. I don't suppose you could enlighten the audience with anything a little more specific. Look, I'm called Alad Jones, probably the most generic, stereotypical Welsh name in existence. It's clear that whoever's writing this hasn't bothered doing a terrible amount of research. I wouldn't count on anything specific. How will we go about finding the location of the Beagle 2-2? Presumably we have some kind of app for that. Hmm, I'm afraid not. We could download one. Only cost 69p. 69 pence? <sighs> I'll buy when it's free. Right, the plan is, we head out, walk around aimlessly, look at a load of stuff eliciting a series of wry remarks, then start clicking everywhere until something happens. I linger in the background and provide a series of hints if you feel things are a little too vexing. Why break tradition, eh, Sub-Lieutenant Jones? <laughs> Let's go! It's a rock! No doubt filled with epic loot, as they say on the YouTubes. Filled with epic loot, as they say on the YouTubes. Ah, cheers, Matt. Mongols? What do we have here, Pierre? Ah. Well, a 
Merci. Well, it would appear that you are too late, monsieur. English. Captain Frank Lee English. I'd just like to clarify that I'm not actually English. I'm Welsh. Monsieur English and Monsieur Welsh. It would appear that you have been too late. Mons of Borden Pierre and moi have beaten you and your queen to this rich, fertile, nouveau, nouveau world. It's a bit rocky. Little bit rocky, eh? A pretty landscaping required. Eh, but soon, the crown you are defecating with your presence will be the location of my vast winery, growing the sweetest French crepes the world has ever tasted. And everyone will eat crepes, wear berets, carry baguettes, ride bicyclettes, and all the other things we French like to do. You're insane. Am I? <laughs> <laughs> and how are you going to stop me? We intend to ridicule you into submission, exhausting an extensive list of social stereotypes conceived through years of suspicion and ignorance. Then what? Are you going to celebrate with a petit crumpet? Eh? Wash down with a cup of tea? Expose your crooked teeth while you laugh regaling this tale with your unsatisfied wives? Ha! Duh! Can't play that game, Monsieur English. I fear you underestimate the extent to which a conceited self-confidence, fueled by national historical achievements, can profit one in such circumstances. Ha! We've been perfecting this same method for centuries. You'll have to do better than that. Honestly, I imagine this standoff will be resolved through the completion of some sort of moderately juvenile, yet entertaining puzzle. How can you be so sure? Well, it's got us this far. By the power of Grayskull, I have the power! Oh, mon dieu, I can't believe you actually said that. Uh, well, we could... Look! A three-headed monkey! Where? Quick, sub Lieutenant Jones, run! Oh, man! How did I fall for that? Ah. Wait, you're right. I am too trusting. Ah. Pardonnez-moi, I'm a sucker for the blue eyes. What now, boyo? Well, before we can legitimately lay claim to this new, new world, we need to remove their flag and hoist ours in its place. Why? Didn't they teach you history at school, Sub-Lieutenant Jones? That's just how these things work. and I'll have you made into pâté. Well, this is embarrassing. 
again. Let's try and salvage something, like a spare wheel nut, or a fragment of dignity. Hmm. Before its untimely passing, the Beagle 2-2 appears to have discovered a rock. Well, it's not quite Tutankhamun's tomb, but right now I'll take what I can get. It does look nice, and not too expensive. No point leaving without a souvenir. Bendito! I make no bones about how grim that was. Here. Either the upholstery's been woven from tinsel, or we've hit the jackpot. It's an elegant lady's purse, filled with loose change.
you want a job done around here, you've got to do it yourself. I can't use these two together. The box is sealed shut. Why, it would be impossible to determine the fate of any biological life form inside. No matter how bad things are going, I find it helps to put a positive spin on things. It has a warmth that you simply don't get with digital. Especially if you burn the sleeve as well. It has a warmth that you simply don't get with digital. Especially if you burn the sleeve as well. I'm afraid I've nothing useful to hand. sound asleep, helpless to oppose the future forced upon them, <laughs> like the youth after the referendum. Hmm, it doesn't appear to be working. While I'm here, I may as well give it a go. Gotcha! You know the old saying? A frog in the hand is worth two in the biological science testing facility. How convenient! The cheese sticks to his moist green flesh, thus progressing this ethically questionable puzzle.
Lieutenant Jones. Aye, Boyo. Do you have any ideas how to deal with our Continental cousins? Above my paycheck, Boyo. Do we have anything back in the ship to de-escalate diplomatic dramas? I can't say I have much experience with triple Ds. Oh, I've handled a couple. But we may be able to fashion something on board to distract them. Don't mind me. Grandparents have taught me anything, it's that this should work. Qu'est-ce que c'est l'aesthetically unremarkable block of pale anglais fromage? Mon dieu, Pierre, remove this banal excuse for cuisine from my presence. Say, plenty more frogs in the biological science testing facility. Maybe I should delegate some of this legwork to Sub Lieutenant Jones. I'm sure he's as keen as the rest of us to see the end of this. Sub Lieutenant Jones! Aye, Boyo? Um, I don't suppose you have a frog handy. Do you have some cheese I can borrow? Oh, that was convenient. Don't mind me! Yo-ho! I've brought a peace offering. A sample of delicious British dairy produce. Do not insult my palate with your bland, insipid rotten lactose. It pales in comparison to our superior, deliciously aged rotten lactose. Well, that's diplomacy off the dining table. How convenient! The cheese sticks to his moist green flesh, thus progressing this ethically questionable puzzle. Grandparents have taught me anything, it's that this should work. Uh, what is this sorry excuse for that? Ooh, is that Swiss cheese? A slice of Emmental de Savoie would eat the touch right now. Et qui est vous? Une petite entrée as well? <gasps> Pierre, les condiments, allez! Don't let him get away. Huzzah! I hope the little fellow's alright. I wouldn't worry. I'm sure they won't harm him. They're not complete savages, just French. Right. Well, that's the first thing it'll have to go.
Let's hold on to my weighted companion. If I'm unable to find a solution to our current dilemma, I can always use this rule. Rebranding outside. Victory is ours, Sub Lieutenant Jones. Now I know how Nelson felt at Trafalgar. Prior to being shot, of course. Although I'm fairly certain I pulled something in my throwing arm earlier, so I can empathize. Quickly, Sub Lieutenant Jones! We don't have long. Do you have a flag ready for hoisting? Standard. Uh, yes. Is it ready to go? Aye, boy -o. Right. Now make sure it's the right way round. Honestly, the number of people that make that mistake, it's, it's just bad schooling if you ask me. I, I think I hear someone coming. Will I hoist it now, boyo? Steady, Jones. It isn't official unless we play the national anthem. Fortunately, I have it saved on this anodized aluminium portable music player. Boyo, they're almost here. I'm trying. I think someone's put it on shuffle. Okay, I, I got it. Now. Queen Elizabeth Sibia. Well, uh, pardon? Oh, excusez-moi. Your queen is welcome to this drag... Baron Infantile Rock, Monsieur English. I... Ah. Je suis désolé. We have discovered a land so abundant and fertile that even the grapes are... Uh, we harvest will be so ripe and succulent that even you British, in spite of your primitive, insipid palate, will acknowledge the superiority of our fine French wine. <laughs> Au revoir, Monsieur English. Uh, I think we'd better be heading on ourselves, Boyo. I can curse of Lieutenant Jones. Uh, it was delightful meeting you, Charles, eh? <laughs> uh, leave it out, chair. Bourgogne Chardonnay, 2015. Good year. Look for you, over there. Why does it always rain in England? <laughs>